The F-86K Sabre Dog flies for three different nations in War Thunder. Let's dive in and check it out. So, right off the start, right now, there are multiple versions of the F-86K in War Thunder, flying in different tech trees. I'm flying the one out of the Italian tech tree here, but everything in this review applies to the others as well. All of the F-86Ks in the game are identical. Identical. The history of the F-86K is... kind of interesting. Development started off in the late 1940s as a derivative of the F-86 Sabre, it wasn't uncommon back then for advanced versions of planes to start development before the base plane had even entered service, and this was an example of that. The idea was to modify the nose of the F-86 and add in a radar system to create an all-weather interceptor to take out Soviet bombers. The original result of this upgrade project was the YF-95A, and the plan was to introduce it as an entirely new fighter. However, the designation got changed to F-86D to help gain political buy-in and approval for the Air Force to purchase the plane, since it could be sold to policymakers as just a natural upgrade on the existing F-86, rather than as an entirely new aircraft. That happened more than a few times in the history of Cold War aviation, uh, with the tuple of Tu-22M perhaps being the most flagrant example. The F-86D featured an afterburning engine, a very powerful radar system, and it replaced the F-86's cannons with a chin-mounted tray of unguided rockets. At the time, unguided rockets were considered better at taking out, you know, large bombers, but this was quickly written off as impractical after an incident called the Battle of Palmdale, where the Air Force failed to shoot down a target drone the Navy had lost control of. I discussed that in more detail in my review of the F-89D Scorpion. In any case, the K version replaced the rockets with cannons and was sold as an export aircraft and flew for about half a dozen different countries. What we have in War Thunder is the F-86K, the export version of the plane, and it fills kind of an odd role in the game. The Sabredog's weapon system includes an AN-APS-21 search radar, this is a search-only radar system. It provides both a PPI and a C-scope, and it has very good performance considering what it's from. It can detect targets out past 40 kilometers, which is amazing for a radar like this, and it can scan almost 180 degrees of sky in front of the plane. Remember that this is a search radar, and it doesn't lock targets. For loadouts, well, there's only one. The only external weapons the F-86K can carry are a pair of basic Caged Seeker AIM-9B Sidewinder missiles. As you probably know, the AIM-9B isn't a great weapon, and most of your shots with it are going to miss, even if you're careful, since it's very easy to dodge, and it doesn't track well or turn well. This leaves you with the M24A1 cannons. I'll be blunt, the M24 seriously underperforms at this point in the tech tree. It's high velocity, so it flies straight, and it's accurate-ish, but the cyclic rate is just too low, and the overall burst mass is only 5 kilograms. I ran into quite a few situations where I had a great deflection lined up, had the trigger down, and the target simply flew right past me in between my shots as I was firing on the correct angle. Like, no kidding, that happened a lot flying this plane and you can see it a few times in the footage I kept for this video. The F-86K carries 528 rounds of cannon ammo, which is only 132 per gun. This ends up being a pretty average ammo load comparable to similar aircraft in the War Thunder tech trees. The flight performance on the F-86K kind of depends on how fast you're going. You get the best performance at medium speeds, between about 500 and 800 kilometers an hour, with pretty bad control compression above that. The rate of climb is pretty good, mostly thanks to the afterburner, but 
even with the afterburner, this remains a subsonic aircraft. That brings us to the turn performance. You get leading edge slats and combat flaps, both of which help maneuverability somewhat, but there are two critical weaknesses that hold the Sabre Dog back. First, the plane is kinda heavy, which ends up hurting its sustained performance in submaneuvers pretty hard, and critically, the plane absolutely loves to rip its wings off. Like, it's addicted to snapping wingtips. The wing-ripping problems I had in this plane reminded me a bit of the Saab Lanson, and even when I was being extra careful, I still had occasional wing-ripping. The plane has a structural limit of only 8 Gs, which isn't too hard to hit in even basic air combat maneuvers, and if you try to snap turn on someone after a merge, you can find yourself suddenly missing some important bits of your plane. The only real silver lining is that the wing rips in the F-86K aren't always fatal, and I was able to recover back to land about half of the time. Of course, you're a sitting duck if anyone comes at you, so still a big problem. I can't overemphasize how much it feels like walking a tightrope flying this plane into a dogfight, because it really is a decently maneuverable plane at medium speeds, and absolutely can get into maneuvers that its airframe just can't survive. And that ends up being more than a little frustrating. When it comes to flying the F-86K into missions, your only mission is air combat. The lack of any external bombs or rockets means that the cannons are the only weapon you can hit ground targets with, which seriously limits what you can attack. The plane is designed as an interceptor, and this is where its strengths are, so use it as an interceptor if you can. The powerful radar can help you find targets well outside your visual spotting range, but there's a bit of a problem. The plane is punished hard by its BR. The F-86K is at 9.3, which means that it can get placed into fights against entire teams of Mach 2 jets with semi-active radar missiles. As a subsonic interceptor with a difficult max G limit, yeah, that's a thing. So, right now, flying successful missions in this plane is more difficult than it should be. In matches where you're mostly up against other subsonic fighters with caged seeker missiles, the F-86K isn't too bad if you can avoid ripping your wings off. But, once you're fighting sparrows, magics, and flares coming out of jets that are 50% faster than you, it's easy to get discouraged, and I'll say with no shame that I had an incredibly difficult time with this plane. It's simply over-tiered. Even just going to 9.0 would be a pretty good improvement, because right now, this thing can get placed into battle against stuff like Mirage 3s and F-8 Crusaders. The reason I mention this when I don't normally talk much about the matchmaking in these reviews is simply to let you know that if you have a really hard time in this plane, it's probably not you, and it's not the plane. It's just a really bad victim of the current BR compression. But hey, at least you didn't have to wait two whole minutes for a match, right? That would be totally unacceptable. Yeah, anyway. Visually, the F-86K is easily identified by the big radome on the front of the plane that, to me, always kind of looked like a big goofy nose. Otherwise, there aren't any custom paint jobs or anything, so you have to make do with decals. It's not a bad looking plane, but it could be a lot better if it had better skins. Landing the F-86K is slower than you might be used to in jets with an afterburner like this. Your gear and landing flaps both rip at about 350 kilometers an hour, so you have to come in kind of slow. Slow for a jet, anyway. The plane has a drag chute, so once you touch down, the landing run isn't too long. The plane has a bubble canopy, which gives the cockpit an excellent external view. The instruments are set up well, and my only real gripe is that the radar scope isn't functional. A missed opportunity, but otherwise a pretty good cockpit. To close out on the F-86K Sabre Dog, this plane has good maneuverability at medium speeds, and an afterburner. Also, the radar is pretty good for a plane of this era. However, its external weapon load is weak for this BR, its cannons have a very low cyclic rate, 
Its wings seem to be made out of plywood and hope. It suffers bad control compression at high speeds. It has a crazy high repair cost, and it is seriously punished by the current matchmaking. The final verdict on the F-86K is that this plane would be better if it were a little lower in BR. As it stands right now at 9.3, it's totally outclassed by most of the stuff it goes up against. As always, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.